Hello, everyone. Thank you for hearing me today. My name is Clément Campo, and on behalf of our team, I'm going to present you a part of our work entitled Position Steering and Synchronization with Antenna Weighting Using Radio. The outline of this presentation is going to be as follows. Um, first, I will explain you a bit more about the background that motivated our work. Then I will um, explain in more details about the original problem we faced with our measurements and the experimental setup that we proposed in order to solve them. Uh, I will explain um, about uh, the criteria that we proposed uh, in order to quantify our system performance and then I will detail how we actually uh, automated our mission process. Finally, I will uh, tell you about the array steering blocks we implement in using the radio before I quickly conclude. So, um, just like my uh, colleague Manuel uh, told you before, I'm also part of uh, the French German Research Institute of Saint Louis in France, or the ISL, where, uh, like him, I'm part of the Sensors Telemetry and Communication Group, or the STC Group. And uh, our team is uh, in charge of telemetry measurements and bidirectional links with flying projectiles. And uh, the work we are presenting now is part of a PhD that is funded by the ISL and supervised by both the ISL and the XLIM laboratory, which is a multidisciplinary research institute located on several geographical sites in France, mainly in Limoges, but also in Poitiers. Um, so, as a part of this team, uh, we widely use uh, antenna arrays um, for the high directivity that they offer and the possibility to dynamically change uh, their radiation pattern by weighting each antenna element uh, signal. Uh, for instance, uh, among our applications, uh, we can be willing to follow a projectile a, that's fired by a gun uh, using antenna arrays by um, electronically tracking this projectile by, uh, by steering the main lobe of that antenna array. And um, so still in the same context, in a previous research, we uh, carried out measurements uh, using uh, analog electronics and four-bit phase shifters in order to develop a system that was able to uh, steer the main lobe of an embedded uh, uniform linear array um, towards a light uh, ground station at all times during a, the project of flight. So uh, this system proved able to, uh, to accurately follow the, the light station at all times during the flight, um, but it suffered from uh, several limitations, such as uh, the, the reduced number of configurations that are allowed uh, using 4-bit uh, embedded phase shifters or uh, the, the limitations of the analog specific design that was uh, created for this uh, working frequency. So back with these results, uh, I'm in charge of investigating the possibilities offered by software defined radio in terms of uh, cost, performance and reconfigurability for phase coherent applications, especially phase array steering. Um, now, our initial problem was uh, that uh, usually, um, the, the first problem was um, before antenna arrays can be uh, efficiently used, um, precise measurements in anechoic environments are uh, required. And the dedicated equipment that is uh, available with these uh, anechoic uh, chambers are often not designed uh, to allow for the additional hardware that comes uh, with uh, steering these antenna arrays using uh, SDR. So, if uh, indeed, um, usually uh, the measured antenna array is directly fed by uh, the dedicated equipment and specially uh, distributed probes are 
are in charge of measuring uh, the radiation pattern. So if we cannot use this dedicated equipment, uh, then several sources of error, such as uh, mispositioning of the antenna array or um, error on the angle that is made between the antenna array and um, the reference probe and so on, could be responsible for um, significant changes in the, measure, in the measured radiation pattern. Oh, and this figure is shown in early attempts that uh, we made at measuring uh, the radiation pattern of a ULA um, using SDR. And in the configuration that you see here, it was intended that uh, a radiation null would be uh, steered towards the zero degree direction. And as you can see, the sources of errors result in almost four degrees uh, of angular shift between the uh, measured null and the intended direction. Therefore, uh, when using SDR to steer on general rays, we had a need for an automated solution to be developed uh, to carry out our measurements. So, um, with these observations, uh, here is uh, the experimental setup that we proposed to solve this problem. Um, so we placed two SDR, in our case, these are two USRPs X310, in order to steer our four element uh, ULA. Our SDRs are frequency and time synchronized uh, using an octoclock, and our ULA, as you can see on the picture on the right, is placed on a mast that can be rotated using a motor so that we can control precisely the angle between the transverse to the antenna array axis uh, with the reference uh, transmitter here shown as a horn antenna. <clears throat> um, so the IT is that by steering our motor, we are able to uh, perform rotation in uh, our horn antenna. Uh, here is our transmitter, uh, reference transmitter, uh, transmits a signal of constant power. Uh, the received signals are uh, digitized by the USRPs and processed by our new radio clients. And we have to be able to control to record uh, the signals that are received by the ULA and at the same time uh, control precisely the rotation of the motor so that at each recording time we can be sure what the value of the angle theta is. So, uh, first with this uh, measurement system the only information we get is uh, the digitized uh, samples from the received signals on each antenna element in the radio, and uh, in order to quantify uh, our system ability to steer, to accurately steer our antenna array, we introduced what we call the computed reception gain. That is, if we uh, call our transmitted signal uh, S, and suppose it is of unitary amplitude, we wrote uh, our received signal on the nth antenna element of the array, SN of T, and, um, and we are going to discuss uh, the expression. So first, uh, we uh, suppose at each time that the amplitude remains uh, unitary, we force amplitude normalization in software in order to uh, ensure this fact, and we're only going to be interested in uh, the phase shifts that uh, the received signals undergo on each channel. So uh, SN of T uh, shows in its expression that we, of course, get the transmitted signal. And we have two uh, different sources of phase shift that are represented here. First exponential term uh, represents the phase shifts that will appear due to the uh, radiation pattern of each individual antenna of the array, depending on uh, the angle theta. And uh, we subtract to that uh, phase shift um, the one that should appear for theta equals zero degree because for this direction we perform phase calibration as we will see later in this presentation. Second source of phase shift, the second exponential term, 
is the represents the natural phase shift that will be uh, that will be introduced between uh, received signals due to the array geometry. So um, these phase shift will depend of the angle theta, and of the d and uh, depend of the uh, difference in phase excitation between adjacent elements. This uh, term is noted beta here, and that's, uh, the, that's the parameter that we users can uh, influence on uh, in order to perform a steering, as we will see also later. And uh, from these received signals, we uh, computed uh, our gain by uh, computing the squared norm of the sum signal. So, the expression is shown here, and uh, by computing the squared norm, we were able to remove the time dependence uh, thanks to the unitary amplitude and uh, conserve an expression that, apart from small perturbations due to each individual uh, antenna element, is representative of uh, only uh, the uh, angle uh, theta between the array and uh, the reference probe, which is known and uh, the beta term that is computed uh, in software by the user. <clears throat> so now that uh, we propose the criteria in order to uh, quantify system performance, uh, it's left for us to actually uh, automate our measurement uh, best we can. So here is uh, an illustration of the program uh, we used uh, in order to carry out our measurements. So this is a GNU radio program, as we want GNU radio to uh, be able to handle all of the measurement by itself. And uh, measurement automation is uh, handled by uh, the blocks that are highlighted in red on the, uh, this uh, figure. Especially the triggered measurement block that we implemented has to control the rotation of the mast during measurement and uh, synchronize it with uh, data recording, and we will see that in a moment. Here you can see a picture of um, the motor that actually rotates the mast and uh, the computer on which the proprietary software that uh, is used to do that um, is installed. So this computer is, and this proprietary software run on Windows and uh, in order to uh, allow for communication between our uh, Linux-based uh, radio program with uh, this uh, proprietary software, we implemented a client-server TCP IP protocol. <clears throat> so um, that means that uh, our uh, block implementing in radio uh, uses a client architecture and uh, implements a few commands that are uh, recognized by uh, the proprietary software and uses the TCP IP protocol in order to send those commands to uh, the Windows computer on which a C program uh, uses the server architecture to uh, transmit uh, these commands to the proprietary software. And as is shown in, in the picture, uh, by this way, we managed to um, to steer the rotation of the mass towards in the exact position we wanted using the radio. Um, the only problem uh, with this uh, implementation is compliance with GNU Radio, as uh, GNU Radio handles uh, streams of data passing through different uh, blocks that are called using uh, processor cores. And uh, each, block, uh, each block has to uh, process the samples in its input buffers and then free the core that was located for the next function to be called. So if we simply use a while loop, as we'd expect, uh, in order to monitor for the motor position, wait for the rotation to be finished, the execution time of the block is just going to be too big for the rest of the program and the whole new radio program is going to freeze. So in order to uh, ensure compliance with uh, this architecture, we implemented our block in um, as a state machine, as you can see here. Each time the block is called, only a single state is uh, executed 
<clears throat> and the next state is decided for the next block call. So uh, each time uh, there are enough input samples in the buffers, uh, the program will either go to the direction that it was set by the user or just make sure that uh, rotation is still ongoing or that. And finally, uh, a fourth state, when uh, the position entered by the user has been reached, the data will be saved and we can go on to the next state. This way, the execution time corresponds to that of other blocks and uh, compliance with NeoIDO can be achieved. So with this uh, experimental setup and automated process, we repeated the same measurement as was shown at the beginning of the presentation. And uh, as uh, we can see here, after automation, uh, compared to first measurement, uh, the shift of almost four degrees uh, is removed and the null actually occurs at the zero degree, uh, in the zero degree uh, direction as, um, as one day. So from this point, we uh, have a proper solution for automated measurement for, in order to uh, measure our uh, array, antenna array radiation patterns using the radio. Um, but now what's left to do for us is to uh, actually implement those array steering uh, functions using uh, the radio, and that's what we will uh, show here. But our first concern in order to do that was to ensure that uh, a proper phase coherent functioning is uh, available using these uh, USRPs. So on this graph on the right, we measured uh, the phase shift that we observed on each receiving channel compared to the first one, which is chosen as the phase reference. And as we can see, before any kind of calibration, we measured uh, phase shifts going on the whole angular range, depending on the set uh, working frequency. And, um, so, and Moreover, these phase shifts uh, appear to be random when uh, the equipment is power cycled. So obviously, a calibration process is also needed. So we did implement a block in the radio in order to uh, perform this phase calibration. So we dis we uh, give ourselves an initialization position direction, which is theta equals zero degree in our case and uh, compensate for the phase shifts we measure between channels for this particular direction. And as we can see, after we perform this uh, calibration, um, the residual phase shifts that are measured uh, between channels uh, remain less than five degrees on the whole uh, frequency range uh, of the equipment. And for frequencies uh, under four gigahertz, uh, these phase shifts uh, that remains uh, is inferior or equal to one degree, hence enabling proper phase coherent functioning using our USRPs. Then the last, the last thing that's left for us is to actually implement our blocks. In order to do that, we um, started from uh, the expression of the area factor of a ULA that is shown here. Um, once again, we, uh, this takes into account the geometry of the array uh, that will deep and uh, the resulting array factor depends of the uh, angle theta between the array and the probe and the uh, difference in phase excitation beta that we impose between the received signals in uh, the digital domain. Depending on whether we are willing to uh, steer the array main lobe or a node towards a particular direction that we set, that we call here theta user. We are going to compute uh, respectively a beta that will compensate for the exponential term and ensure that um, constructive interference is maximized between our signals when uh, the uh, angle theta between the array and the probe matches the value that is entered by the user, or if we want to steer a null, we will ensure that for when these two values match, uh, this same uh, beta term will ensure that we have regular phase shifts uh, spread among our n uh, recent signals. 
And now uh, are shown in this fig on this figure um, measurement for uh, main lobe steering towards zero degree uh, direction and no steering uh, towards the same direction. And this figure uh, shows comparison between um, the measurement results we got using our set experimental setup and uh, the expected value, numerical values from simulation using the error factor expressions. And uh, as you can see, as we can see, uh, good accordance is found between simulations and measurement results in both cases, which uh, shows, well, first that um, we are actually ab able to accurately steer our uh, main lobe or our node towards uh, the zero degree uh, direction and that uh, our computed reception gain that we introduced earlier uh, presents a relevant criteria in order to quantify our system ability to steer uh, these uh, radiation patterns. Here presented some additional measurements uh, for uh, beam steering uh, applications. Um, in these measurements, uh, the main lobe of the antenna array is steered uh, towards a direction uh, set between minus 30 degrees and plus 30 degrees. And uh, for these values, uh, the error between uh, the truly measured radiation maximum and uh, the direction set by the user uh, remains inferior or equal to one degree uh, over the whole uh, angular range, which shows that uh, our implemented block is able to accurately steer our lobe towards uh, the direction set by the user. In the same way, measurements are shown in the same condition for no steering, and except for two values of theta, which are uh, theta equals minus 20 degree and theta equals plus 30 degrees, where uh, error is found to be one degree, except for these two values, uh, the measured null corresponds to uh, the value that is entered by the user. Once again, showing that uh, the null is correctly steered towards the wanted direction. So, to quickly conclude, um, this work uh, ha uh, was intended to uh, investigate for the possibilities of SDR technology in the in the in the frame of phase coherent applications, especially uh, array steering. And when doing so, we encountered several problems, among which um, the fact that our available measurement equipments were not compatible with uh, array steering when using SDR, or uh, the fact that random phase shifts occurred between our receiving channels during measurements. And uh, as a, 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 an answer, we developed an automated and precise measurement procedure uh, that is fully controlled uh, using uh, the open source new radio software. We also proposed a phase calibration solution uh, using only software. That means that we didn't need any additional hardware uh, in order to perform this calibration. And um, we also implemented main lobe and new steering uh, blocks in the radio and tested their performance uh, using the presented experimental setup. And for these measurements, we uh, our results showed uh, that we were able to accurately steer our main lobe or respectively our node in the minus 30 to plus 30 degree angular range within one degree precision. Um, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you have questions, I'll do my best to answer them.